All right. So we'll start talking about the game because I'm sure that's what you want to talk about. So you guys showed resiliency for the third time in a row now here, down by a couple of goals and then exploding in the second quarter and just constantly finding a way to keep them down in the third and fourth. Uh, what changed in the game? Yeah, you know, we had a, a bit of adversity, and then I think we responded well. And it's 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 a sign of a group that believes in each other, I, I think. And we're getting a little bit more mature. And while I, we still got a young roster, I think, uh, like I say, we're, we're growing up a little bit, and they're taking care of the stuff we need to take care of. I asked Ryan Smith about starting the season 3-0, and and he kind of immediately shot it down and said, hey, we've been here before. We were 6-0 and last year. we got to keep our foot on the gas pedal. Are you kind of echoing that message? Yeah, 100%. It's, 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 it's great where we are today, but tomorrow's more, way more important than what we did here tonight. So we got to, yeah, like I say, it's Christmas here. We you know, enjoy the family time, but you know, we got a, a long trip out heading out to San Diego. So it's, uh, we got, our, like I say, a tough one ahead of us here. So Wednesday when the Christmas festivities are over, it's, it's time to turn the page and get ready and you know, focus on what's next. It feels like uh, it's all positives. And when you win, typically that happens. I hate to talk about it, but Rylan Hartley uh, shaking up in the third quarter didn't look great on the floor. Is there any update on him? Not yet. Uh, and again, I think it's uh, will be advised at some point here shortly. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's tough to see. And, and again, I, I do like the way our guys responded and kind of rallied around it a little bit. And Hachi again stepped in for game three and, and short, very short notice again once again and, and shut the door and was really great. Is, uh, and, and to flip it on to Hutchcraft, as you mentioned, like is this, has he peeled a layer back to his game that just wasn't seen before? Or as a coach, did you see this maybe eventually uh, blossoming for him long term into the guy he is? Goalies take some time to you find their, their way and get into their groove. And, and again, now he's in that groove right now, right? And he had a great summer and he's just carried that play, what he did in, in May, June, and July. Um, and he's just carried it forward here. And, and again, he's stepping in. Our guys don't miss a beat with, uh, with him there. And it's, again, great to see for him and great to see for our group. You can only win one game at a time, and you've won three to start the season. I'm going to ask about you because you've won 100 as a head coach now. Can you take me all the way back to being hired as a head coach here in 2010? You had a long playing career. You're on the bench for a little, and then you get that opportunity. D did you have any expectations for, for where you would go from there? No, by no stretch of the imagination. It was, uh, like I say, it was, it was a great opportunity, and, and I'm very fortunate that the opportunity still is presenting itself. And again, in this position, you know, it's just like a game. It's week to week, and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So all I'm, again, just focusing on what's next. And um, I like to pride myself on the preparation that we do. That's all I can do to affect the team, basically. And uh, I'll just keep doing that. Your preparation led to, once upon a time, an overtime win at the XL Energy Center in Minnesota back in January of 2011, and that would be your first win as a head coach. Do you still remember that game? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't, it may be, again, I think I said it to you, or said it to somebody earlier, like, when I get old and I get gray, you know, we'll stop and we'll look back in a few, but right now it's San Diego's next, and, and that's more important for, for us, and, and yeah, it's more important for us. You may have already answered this then with that response right there. I was going to ask you what this, this win means to you. I guess is it something that you say, it'll mean something to me later in life? 100%. And then again, it's got, I got the ball and I kept it this time. So it's, it, 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 it's a milestone I'm very proud of. And, and to follow the guys, you know, Mel's being one here, I think. Uh, um, like I say, they, they paved the way, and I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of that. And still have an opportunity next week to see if we can get one more. Well, maybe this might be a question that you may be able to answer right now, and that's, have you evolved as a, as a coach, as a head coach, from from the time you started in 2010 to where we are here in the end of 2023? 100%. I used to be young and naive, and um, I relied a lot. I still rely on my players to, you know, do a, to send that message. And, but, but, yeah, again, I'm not as – I'm a little more patient, I think. And, again, having a son that's in this age group and on this team – you know, as he's grown, I've kind of grown with it, and I can hopefully think I can relate to these guys a little bit as well still. I'm not uh, that old and not that out of touch that, uh, yeah, that they're going to tune me out anytime soon. But, uh, hey, yeah, so far so good. You mentioned your son, Austin Hazen. Um, you know, I think we were talking this morning about, like, he was in the locker room as a kid when you were a player, and this full circle, again, something you may reflect on down, in, down the road in life, but... 
your 100th win, your son gets a goal tonight, he's had a great start to his season. I, I can't think many people, well, one, many coaches aren't getting that milestone in this league, let alone doing it with their sons on their team. What does that mean? No, it's, again, it's a special moment because, yeah, he was he was in that locker room. He was born in October, so three, four months old, and he came into it for the very first time. And it's glad to see 23 later, years later that he's, again, a little different location, but he's in that Nighthawk room. It, it's, it's awesome to see, and it's a special moment. And, again, right, it's – He's got to keep earning it, and we got to keep earning our wins by doing our jobs here. So that's when I get old, I'll smile a bit more, maybe about it. <laughs> Last thing I'll ask then is, and you know, we asked about how you evolved as coach, and you said you have. Is there anything over this 13-year journey that I don't know whether it's an individual piece of advice or just some things that stick out to you in your head uh, that that have stayed with you throughout this process? I think the biggest thing is the people you surround yourself with. And, and again, I was very fortunate to learn from somebody, you know, as, as mentored in, in Polly Day, who's, uh, again, still still daily, almost not, maybe not daily anymore because he's with Philly, but like a lot of conversations. And, and again, learning from Terry Sanders and Bob McMahon on this bench as well. And there's a lot of guys along the way that I've uh, been able to, have been fortunate enough to be surrounded by. And again, Kyle right now and Patty through this whole process for the most part as well. Lucky to have them and very fortunate that, the, like I say, it's, I'm working with these guys.